Talking health with Dr. Scott Ackerman, a new report shows the largest ever one-year decline in U.S. cancer death rates. The overall cancer death rate has been falling about 1.5% a year since 1991, but it fell 2.2 percent from 2016 to 2017. Joining me now to talk about this, Dr. Scott Ackerman. So why the big decline? Well, the big decline is really driven by the decline in lung cancer death rates. In 1991, cancer death rates peaked, and since then it's been going down nicely, as you saw, 1.5 percent a year. But the last year measured, which was between 2016 and 17, because we're always a year or two behind in collecting the data, showed a 2.2 diminishment of cancer death rates. That's a huge increase over years before. And that's really being driven by the number one cancer that causes, the number one cancer that causes death, and that's lung cancer. And in lung cancer, we saw in that year a 5% decline in lung cancer deaths in men, and a 4% decline in lung cancer deaths in women. Better treatments, better technologies. A few things. So increase, um, uh, breast, uh, sorry, increasing uh, lung uh, smoking cessation, so there are people smoking less, so the incidence of lung cancer is going down. And more importantly, is the fact that our advances in treatment have gotten really great. And so the advances for advanced lung cancers uh, are, are, have made a big change. And these advances are things like targeted therapies, immunotherapies, advances in radiation treatments. All these have led to much increased survival in patients with lung cancer. But the big question becomes, does this progress continue? And the question is, with the increase in obesity and people not eating as healthfully as they should, there's some question that it may not. Well, we've seen decreases in the death rates in the four major cancers, lung, breast, colorectal, and prostate. But the incidence of certain cancers is actually still going up because, as you're saying, because of obesity and because of lack of exercise. So breast cancer, although our death rates are going down, the incidence of breast cancer is going up because of the obesity epidemic and the increased prevalence of obesity in the United States in women, and also because of diminished fertility rates in women. That also leads to increased breast cancer incidence rates. Can uh, colorectal cancer, those rates have gone down dramatically over the years because of screening, and, and which means prevention. When you have a colonoscopy, you remove a polyp that prevents a cancer. But we're seeing more colorectal cancers with uh, increasing obesity as well. And there's another concern, uh, disparity in racial care depending where, depending where you live. So there is still disparity. And disparity is, is being narrowed a bit, and that's a, a, a good thing. And the disparities are being narrowed racially, but the disparities are not being narrowed by socioeconomic, uh, by so, socioeconomically. So we see racial uh, disparities changing, but what we really see, the real truth in disparity, is socioeconomic disparity. And that socioeconomic disparity means that poor people have less access to screening, they have less access to advanced treatments, and they, and they have less access to care. So if you ensure equal access, you can close the gap, so they have to work on that. Correct, yep. So what's the best way to do that? Reforming some health care? Um, I think it's more than just that. It's, it's, it's also changing um, behaviors and changing priorities in people's lives. If you provide access to health care for all, which I think is a great, I, I agree with, but just providing access to health care for all doesn't mean everyone takes advantage of that. So it's at providing access to all and also education that goes with it. And it's a big political debate, but I don't think anybody's really come up with a viable and workable plan yet. And that's the big issue on the, on the stage right now. Correct. I agree. I think it's, it's a wonderful thing to have, but we'll see how it plays out and we'll see what the, what the political implications are. Dr. Ackman, always a pleasure to talk to you. If you missed any of this information, don't worry. We'll post this interview on newsforjax.com a little later this morning. Just look for it under the health section.